In today's video, we're gonna learn how to create this video slash photography website in Figma. And at the end, we're gonna prototype it up for some cool animations. Let's get right to it. So let's start with making a frame and we're actually gonna choose MacBook Pro 14. Just cause I generally work on a MacBook, kind of makes it easier to work from that size. Now let's call that home and then let's paste in an image. Now this can be any image. I've just chosen this one from Unsplash, which is just copyright free. So any image you want for the design. Here I've just taken a rectangle tool and I've drawn it so it's the same height and I'm gonna pull it out so it's the same width of the frame as well. Now we want to go over to the width dimensions and we're going to divide this by five. The next thing we want to do to this is we want to give it a stroke, but we want to give it to just the right hand side. So if we click down here, then here, then we're just going to give this a white stroke and we're going to get rid of the fill on that too. Now let's press shift and A and we'll make that an auto layout. Now we can duplicate our rectangle five times across. Now I just use command and D to duplicate it out. Then if we click on our auto layout, then we can actually get rid of this padding because we don't need it. So we're going to make all of these values zero. So gap zero and um, padding at the top and padding at the sides, make it all zero. And then we can just center align that auto layout and we know it'll fill our frame completely. Now we actually just need our grid to cover two thirds of the screen. So let's select our first rectangle and let's make the stroke on this 0% opacity. And then we'll select our main auto layout layer and we'll make the opacity of that 15%, which will affect all the rectangles within it. We're gonna paste in a logo. Now this is just a logo that I made up just for the purpose of this design. But if you've got your own, obviously use that. We wanna position it so it's 40 pixels from the top and 64 from the left. You can hold alt on your keyboard to see that. We're gonna lock our grid that we made and we're gonna add a new text layer. Now this could be anything you want it to be. For the purpose of this, I'm gonna write film production based in Scotland, UK. Now you can use whatever you want for your type, but I'm using this Geist semi bold and I'm gonna make that 16 and I've got negative 4% letter spacing because I feel like that just looks quite nice. We're gonna get this position up at the top in line with our logo and we're actually gonna space it out about 32 pixels from the line. Then we're gonna just duplicate this out and drag it over here. And then here we're gonna make a very simple navigation, very edgy navigation, comma separated. And then let's just add a few spaces in between them and then we'll just copy and paste that just to make sure it's the same between them. This is about as minimal as it gets, but I think it kind of works for this. We'll select all of these and then just make sure that they're all aligned at the top and they're all 40 pixels from the top. And then we'll also make sure that our navigation that we just made is 32 pixel from the line on the grid. Duplicate that out again, and then we'll just add a work with us link and make sure that's about 32 pixels as well. If we select all of them, then we can make sure they're all very much aligned and we can just add them to a frame and we'll call that header. And whilst we're doing that, we might as well name our logo layer and we'll name our grid layer as well, just to keep everything clean and know where we're at. Select text layer, press alt and drag it down to make a new one. And we'll write film here and we're gonna make this black weight and we're gonna make this massive. Let's make this 400 pixels in size and we're gonna rotate this 90 degrees and have this sitting just on the right like this. We wanna try to get it spaced equally between the line and the edge of the page. And if we go into appearance here, this is what really makes it look cool. If we select difference, you can see that background image starting to come through in a sort of inverted way. And the texture that comes in behind it just gives it so much depth and yeah we're getting somewhere so let's duplicate this down again we're always just duplicating our text just to make it easier and we're just going to write scroll and we're going to keep it the exact same weight the exact same size we're just going to position it at the bottom let's say 16 pixels from the bottom duplicate this out again and this time we're going to write iceland 2025 we're going to change the weight of this to black and we're going to increase the size of it to 64 four pixels and we're going to position this from the bottom just around the same as what we have for the scroll 
and we're going to just double check that it's 64 pixels from the left because we want everything to be aligned. Using our circle tool, let's make a circle that is 64 pixels. We're going to add a stroke to it, white, and we'll get rid of the fill. Now, if you click this little arrow, we're actually going to make a polygon. Now, this is just a three pointed polygon, a triangle. And if we make this just say 46 pixels, turn it on its side and we're going to do the same thing, add a stroke and get rid of the fill. And let's just drag that into the middle of the circle. We'll select both of those layers that we just created, right click and we'll add them to a frame. And this is our play icon. Very simple. We'll make sure it's positioned in the dead center of the screen just using the alignment tools there. Now let's drag a big old frame across this first part of our grid. Now I'm going to make the height of it 290 pixels. And what we want to do is we want to space it 64 pixels on each side. So in the dimensions here, let's do minus 128. And then if we drag that to the center of here, we'll know that it now is 64 pixels from each side, more or less. And that's positioned vertically in the middle of the page. Let's just give this a fill color just so we can see it. And then we're going to add in an image. I've got this image of volcano. This is also just from Unsplash. Obviously use whichever image you want. We'll make an ellipse. We'll draw that on there. We'll go into effects and we're actually going to use a layer blur and we're going to use Figma's new progressive blur for this. And then for the color, we're just going to use the color picker and we're going to find something that looks like it could be a glow from the lava. And we're going to drag that up just to the image and then we're going to position it just behind it and we're going to play with the layer mode and the opacity just to get this dialed in so i'm going to choose something like soft light hard light it's kind of hard to see it but it, the idea is that it is very subtle and if we drag it out like that you can see it a little bit more and if we duplicate it again we're going to add a bit of a highlight to it as well so this one that we've just duplicated out going to make this slightly more yellow and we're going to sit this on top of it and just play around with some of these lighting effects soft light and hard light is a good way of um, dealing with this sort of light stuff but you don't want to go over the top with this obviously this steps completely optional as well but I think for this image it works quite well so let's select both of them and we're going to duplicate them out flip it around and move it up to the top of the image because we actually want to do the same again but with some of that kind of smoky blue coming through. So just going down to the colors of them, we're gonna change them to something blue or smoky. Um, and we're just selecting these colors and playing around to see what kind of works. Let's select all the ellipses we just made and we'll add that to a group just using Command and G. And we'll name some of these just to keep everything clean. So that is it for the design. Now the last thing we're going to do is actually just in preparation for the animation. So if we go to our grid and we use command D, duplicate it, then we'll right click on it and we're going to remove the auto layout. We select all the rectangles and we're going to add that fill back to them and we're going to make that 100%. If we click on the grid, then we can make the appearance of that 100% and we'll have a second grid that is solid black that sits on top of our first grid. If we click on our main container frame and press Command D, we're gonna duplicate this out two more times so we've got three of them. Then we can click on our header and we can move that just outside of the frame, but we wanna make sure it's still in our main container frame. We're gonna do the same for Iceland and scroll and we're gonna move the film text just out to the right. For our glows, we're just gonna change the opacity of this to zero, and we're gonna slide the video box just off to the left too. If we click on our play icon, we're gonna press K, and then we're gonna to go to scale, and we're gonna change this to one, and we'll also change the opacity of it to zero. This will be our starting state for the animation. Now we can go over to the second screen and start adding back in our elements. So let's slide up one of the grids, We'll slide down the one beside it. This is what's going to give it that kind of shutter reveal effect. We'll slide up this one. And then we'll slide down these first two and we'll slide both of them together down like that. We actually want our header to come in last. So let's move that up for now, just so it's out of the frame. 
and we'll move scroll down as well moving over to our last frame now we actually just need to do this step again we'll just quickly move these rectangles just so they're out the way as we already did and this final state of the design should be the final design with everything on it at the top right if we select prototype we can connect our first frame to our second frame and we're going to change the trigger to after delay smart animate and we're going to give it a duration of 2000 milliseconds with a delay of one millisecond we're going to change the curve to ease in and out we're going to connect our second frame to our third frame and we're going to keep it mostly the same delay one millisecond but let's change the duration to 500 milliseconds and then you should have something that looks like this and that's it for the tutorial. Hopefully you guys managed to follow along. If you did and you liked it, please consider hitting the like button. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And I will catch you guys soon with another video.